Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Sellis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friday, the 9th of July, 2021, the 14th week in Ordinary Time, is the Feast of St. Augustine Chow, Chinese priest and martyr, and 119 of his companion martyrs. China continues to persecute the church. Does China want to achieve a goal that the mighty Roman Empire failed to accomplish? The Third Reich of Adolf Hitler tried to suppress the church but was suppressed. Joseph Stalin died while trying to crush what the Bolsheviks called the opium of the people. The missionary effort of the church continues worldwide uninterrupted by persecution and pandemics. Laudate, our daily prayer. Lord Jesus, help me to patiently and joyfully accept the hardships, adversities, and persecution which comes my way in serving you and your kingdom of love, truth, and goodness. Strengthen my faith and give me courage that I may not shrink back from doing your will. Amen. Magnificat Daily Scripture But first, more information on the optional memorial of St. Augustine Chao Rong and Companions. This group of 120 martyrs includes 33 European missionaries and 87 Chinese ranging in age from 9 to 76. Their collective witness over three centuries is one of great courage and joy amid cruel tortures. 14-year-old Anna Wang was the last of a group of women and children to be cut down by nationalist rebels, the Boxers, on July 22, 1900. Smiling, she faced the rebels. She said, The door of heaven is open to all. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. She was canonized with the other Chinese martyrs by Pope John Paul II on October 1st, 2000. The Feast of St. Teresa of Lisieux, Patroness of the Missions. At last I can die now that I have seen for myself that Joseph is still alive. A reading from the book of Genesis, chapter 46, verse 1. Israel set out with all that was his. When he arrived at Beersheba, he offered sacrifices to the God of his father Isaac. There, God speaking to Israel in a vision by night called, Jacob, Jacob. He answered, Here I am. Then he said, I am God, the God of your father. Do not be afraid to go down to Egypt, for there I will make you a great nation. Not only will I go down to Egypt with you, I will also bring you back here, after Joseph has closed your eyes. So Jacob departed from Beersheba, and the sons of Israel put their father and their wives and children on the wagons that Pharaoh had sent for his transport. They took with them their livestock and the possessions they had acquired in the land of Canaan. Thus Jacob and all his descendants migrated to Egypt, his sons and his grandsons, his daughters and his granddaughters. All his descendants he took with him to Egypt. Israel had sent Judah ahead to Joseph so that he might meet him in Goshen. On his arrival in the region of Goshen, Joseph hitched the horses to his chariot and rode to meet his father Israel in Goshen. As soon as Joseph saw him, he flung himself on his neck and wept a long time in his arms. And Israel said to Joseph, At last I can die. Now I have seen for myself that Joseph is still alive. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 37 The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good, that you may dwell in the land and be fed in security. 
Take delight in the Lord, and He will grant you your heart's requests. The Lord watches over the lives of the wholehearted. Their inheritance lasts forever. They are not put to shame in an evil time. In days of famine they have plenty. Turn from evil and do good, that you may abide forever. For the Lord loves what is right, and forsakes not His faithful ones. The salvation of the just is from the Lord. He is their refuge in time of distress. And the Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them, because they take refuge in Him. The salvation of the just comes from the Lord. Alleluia, Alleluia. When the Spirit of Truth comes, He will guide you to all truth and remind you of all I told you. Alleluia, Alleluia. For it will not be you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 10 verse 16. Jesus said to his apostles, Behold, I am sending you like sheep in the midst of wolves, so be shrewd as serpents and simple as doves. But beware of men, for they will hand you over to courts and scourge you in their synagogues. And you will be led before governors and kings for my sake as a witness before them and the pagans. When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say. For it will not be you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Brother will hand over brother to death, and the father his child. Children will rise up against parents and have them put to death. You will be hated by all because of my name, but whoever endures to the end will be saved. When they persecute you in one town, flee to another. Amen, I say to you, you will not finish the towns of Israel before the Son of Man comes. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Magnificat Meditation of the Day is entitled, The Spirit's Strength. Infinitely good Lord, you know my heart and my weaknesses. Do not abandon me. You are infinitely just and ask nothing of me that is beyond my strength. My happiness knows no limit when I contemplate your infinite righteousness and put all things in your hands. From experience I know that on my path, covered with innumerable obstacles, in the night of trial without exit, you, the infinitely righteous one, have never abandoned me. At those moments when I nearly fainted under the weight of evil, You did not abandon me. When I felt tempted to despair and to give up everything, when the storm raged without and within, when the winds of calumny buffeted against my good intentions and actions, Lord, you did not abandon me. It was at such moments that the Holy Spirit taught me what I should do and how I should speak. At such moments, the Holy Spirit poured courage and hope into my weakened soul and comforted me. The Lord will not abandon me to my limitations. This meditation was written by Venerable Francis Xavier Wynne Van Tuan, Cardinal, who died in 2002, was imprisoned by the Vietnamese government from 1975 to 1988 during which time he secretly sent prayers and spiritual writings to his flock. Laudate Daily Bible Verse The Feast of St. Augustine Chow and Companion Martyrs Quote, When they hand you over, do not worry about how you are to speak or what you are to say. You will be given at that moment what you are to say, for it will not be you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. Unquote. Matthew 10, 19.
In our key scripture for today, we see a prophecy of what awaits the disciples as they embark on the apostolic mandate. Quote, As you go, make this proclamation. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Unquote. Matthew 10.6 Jesus also predicted a great deal of victory and consolation for his disciples. Arraignment before governors and magistrates will be an opportunity for them to see the power of the Holy Spirit in their defense. We see the fulfillment of this when Peter and John face the full Sanhedrin. We see the same power at play when Paul was before Festus, the Roman high official. Jesus was not kidding. He promises to support his disciples. He does so. St. Augustine Chow and his companion martyrs defied the rage of the Chinese persecutors. They accepted martyrdom rather than deny their faith. They are enjoying their reward today. Quote, the movement of persecution that is about to break out against my church will focus on three objects. In fact, this has already begun. I will be attacked in my priest. They represent my Eucharistic face. The face of the priesthood is my face once again mocked and covered with mud, spittle, and blood. I will be dishonored in the sacrament of my body and blood. You will see an increase of sins against the mysteries of my body and blood, sacrilege, desecrations, and mockeries. I will be attacked in the weakest and most vulnerable members of my mystical body, this, too, has already begun, but it will increase until it reaches proportions that will oblige my father to avenge the blood of his beloved innocents." Unquote. In Sinu Jesu, page 91. Reflections and Actionable Challenges from Our Spiritual Readings Introductory Prayer Lord, you are the one constant in my life. You are my beginning and my end. I love you as my Savior. I trust you as my closest companion. I hope in you as the one who will welcome me into eternal joy. Amen. Our petition for the next three challenges. Grant me, Lord, a deeper union with you as the only one who will never fail me. Challenge number one, trust, but not too much. A key paradox of Jesus was that he loves us so much that he underwent the horrors of crucifixion to redeem us and give us a chance at salvation. Yet, he also knows our weaknesses. He knows how fickle the human heart can be. Jesus would not trust himself to them because he knew them all and did not need anyone to testify about human nature. He himself understood it well. John 2.24 Likewise, Jesus warns us not to put too much faith in other people. Like us, everyone else has weaknesses. Our faith in them should be relative and realistic. It shouldn't be on the same level as our faith in Christ. Do I put too much faith in others? Do I realize that expecting too much from them leaves me open to needless anguish? Our second challenge, betrayal for siblings. Christ is the rock against which the waves of humanity crash. His demands cut to the heart of each of us and require a personal response. How each person responds is a mystery. Some will say yes, some will say no. The division within each person can echo in divisions within families. Little wonder that kin can be our fiercest foes. Christ's own show of steadfastness assures us that he remains more loyal than even family members. 
Can I accept that following Christ can cause friction with my loved ones? Can I offer up my trials for their salvation? Challenge number three. Love without sacrifice. Christ never promised his followers an easy life. If he had, there would be no shortage of disciples. He knows what really makes us mature in love. Sacrifice. Sacrifice purifies us, ennobles us. Love without sacrifice is a fairy tale. To love means to share in another's pain. When men and women demand to be autonomous and totally self-sufficient, said Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI in a speech February 9, 2008, they run the risk of being closed in a self-reliance that reduces them to an oppressive solitude. Similarly, if we close ourselves to God's pleasure, we stay stuck in our littleness. Can I accept suffering for Christ as a way to break out of the cocoon of my comfort? Our Conversation with Christ Jesus, it's not easy being your follower. Opposition can arise on all sides, even from within the family. Help me bear all this well, for love of you. Grant me the serenity to persevere in the faith. I offer my sacrifices for the salvation of those who oppose my following you. Our Resolution I will pray or make a sacrifice for a family member who is away from the faith. Meditation What does Jesus mean when he says his disciples must be sheep in the midst of wolves? Matthew 10.16 the prophet Isaiah foretold a time when wolves and lambs will dwell in peace. Isaiah 11.6 and 65.25 This Old Testament prophecy certainly refers to the second coming of Christ when all will be united under the Lordship of Jesus after he has put down his enemies and established the reign of God over the heavens and the earth. Ephesians 1.10 and Revelations 11.15 In the meantime, the disciples must expect opposition and persecution from those who oppose the gospel and the coming of God's kingdom. The readiness to serve and face hardship for Christ and his kingdom. Jesus never hesitated to tell his disciples what they might expect if they chose to follow him. Here Jesus says to his disciples, this is my task for you at its grimmest and worst. Do you accept it? This is not the world's way of recruitment for service and toil with promise of honor and reward. After the British defeat of Dunkirk, June 1940, Churchill offered his country blood, toil, sweat, and tears. This is not the message we prefer to hear when the Lord Jesus commissions us in his service for the advancement of God's kingdom and the battle against Satan's kingdom of darkness and death. Nonetheless, our privilege is to follow in the footsteps of the Lord and Master who willingly laid down his life for us in order to bring us victory over Satan, sin, and death. Are you willing to accept hardship and suffering in serving the Lord Jesus Christ? Lord Jesus, help me to patiently and joyfully accept the hardships, adversities, and persecutions which come my way in serving you and your kingdom of love, truth, and goodness. Strengthen my faith and give me courage that I may not shrink back from doing your will. Amen. Further reflection, entitled, Martyr, quote, You will be brought to trial before rulers and kings, to give witness before them and before the Gentiles on my account, unquote, Matthew 10, 18. Jesus is the truth, John 14, 6, the whole truth and nothing but the truth. 
He does not conceal from us the more difficult realities of following Him. He bluntly states we are sent out like sheep among wolves. Matthew 10.16 The government will bring us to trial. The religious leaders will flog us. Even our families will turn us over to the police because of our Christian witness. Matthew 10.17 We will be hated by all on account of Jesus. Matthew 10.22 We are followers of Jesus, not because we don't know any better, but because we love Him. Naturally, we don't want to suffer or be rejected. Nonetheless, our love for Jesus is stronger than our love of self or our fear of pain. We want to be with our Lord even at the foot of the cross. We prefer to die with Jesus rather than live without Him. We love Him for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer, in sickness and in health. Even death will never separate us from Him, for love is stronger than death. Romans 8.35 Songs 8.6 Jesus the Bridegroom, I love you. I live for you. Our Prayer Jesus, if it be your will, may I die a martyr's death for love of you. God's Promise to Us as soon as he saw him, he flung himself on his neck and wept a long time in his arms. Genesis 46, 29 Thomas A. Kempis quote from The Imitation of Christ It is a great honor, a great glory to serve thee and to despise all things for thee. For they who willingly subject themselves to thy most holy service shall have great grace. They shall experience the most sweet consolation of the Holy Spirit, who, for the love of thee, have cast away all carnal delight. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.